In this video, we'll be discussing the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or RAS. So what is RAS? Well, the story starts with a, a hormone called angiotensinogen that's produced in the liver, which encounters an enzyme called renin. And renin, like a little Pac-Man, will take this angiotensinogen and actually cleave off part of the hormone to produce angiotensin 1. From angiotensin 1, another enzyme comes into play called the angiotensin converting enzyme, which is a very original name. And you'll note that, again, we cleave off part of the hormone and we end up with something called angiotensin 2. Now, angiotensin 2 is really the workhorse of the RAS system. What angiotensin 2 does is it goes to the kidney, triggers something called the angiotensin 1 receptor, and does three primary things. The first is it causes sodium retention. And because sodium follows water, we also get water retention, which increases blood pressure. And it also triggers something called aldosterone, which is a hormone not that dissimilar to angiotensin II that produces more sodium and water retention. Why does the RAS system matter? Well, the reason is, is that it produces a great target for our drug therapy. So if we go back to angiotensin one with the angiotensin converting enzyme, we can actually block this step using something called an ACE inhibitor. Similarly, if angiotensin two is produced, we can actually block its ability to trigger the AT1 receptor. And the drugs that do this are called angiotensin two receptor blockers. So on the top here, our ACE inhibitors are blocking the conversion from angiotensin one to angiotensin two. On the bottom, we're blocking angiotensin II from being able to get to the kidney itself to trigger uh, the sodium and water reabsorption. There's a number of different ACE inhibitors on the market, and in this video, we're gonna be focusing on three different ACE inhibitors with one combination product. The most common by far is called lisinopril. It has two different brand names, Prinavil and Zestril. And you can see that lisinopril ends in IL, as do the two brand names, Prinavil and Zestril. It's dosed once a day. There's actually a combination product uh, with something called hydrochlorothiazide, or uh, it's sometimes abbreviated HCTZ. And HCTZ comes in basically two different doses that it is combined with, either 12 and a half or 25 milligrams. And again, this is combined into lisinopril with the doses seen above. When we have this combination product, uh, the brand name for this is Prenzide or Zestroetic. You can see that these are fairly similar uh, to the brand names of lisinopril alone, but these are a little bit longer, and they're longer. Uh, one way to remember the, the brand names is that because it has two products in it, it makes sense that it's longer. The other thing is that Prenzide, sound, the suffix is zide, just like hydrochlorothiazide, uh, so that's another way to remember it. A similar ACE inhibitor to lisinopril is called enalapril. The brand name is Vasotec. Uh, and the reason I say it's similar is that it's dosed very similarly. And then finally, our third ACE inhibitor is called ramipril or Altase. You can see it's dosed very differently than lisinopril. So I think of ramipril as the alternative ACE or Altase because it's very different than enalapril and lisinopril. It's important that uh, all ACE inhibitors have the suffix of pril so if you see something ending in pril, there's a good chance it's an ACE inhibitor. The other drug class that we're discussing in this video are the angiotensin receptor blockers, or the ARBs. And there's three common ones that meet the criteria for the top 250 drugs. The first is Losartan, brand name is Cozar. The second is Olmosartan, the brand name is Benicar. And then finally, Valsartan, or Diavan. And you can see that for Valsartan, or diavan, they both have a V in them, but aside from that, there's no good mnemonic to remember them. They're all dosed very differently, and as you can see, they all end in the suffix of sartan. So again, if you see sartan at the end of a drug name, there's a very good chance that it's an angiotensin receptor blocker, or ARB. So what are ACEs and ARBs used for? Well, first is hypertension, or high blood pressure. It's also used for heart failure, uh, ACEs or ARBs are kind of the drug of choice for patients with heart failure, but they're also good for general cardio protection, meaning that they can reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke in certain patient populations. And then finally, these are great for patients with chronic kidney disease, where if they have too much pressure in the kidney, uh, 
so much so that it ends up causing damage to the kidney, then using an ACE or an ARB can decrease the pressure in the kidney that makes it so less damage can occur. So there's a number of interesting adverse effects with our ACEs and ARBs. One is any symptom of low blood pressure. So this could be getting dizziness, fatigue, lightheaded, anything like that. And then also very interestingly is we can see hyperkalemia. And that's just a fancy term for an elevated serum potassium level. The actual pharmacology of this is fairly complex, but the long story short is that uh, in the kidney, by blocking the reabsorption of sodium, we cause the kidney to reabsorb potassium or to not get rid of it, uh, which in turn means that you'll hang on to more potassium because of the kidney. A few other adverse effects is acute kidney injury. And in this case, the problem is, uh, as I said earlier, we can decrease the pressure in the kidney uh, but if we do it too much, then it can actually damage the kidney. So too little is bad, too much pressure is bad. Uh, so in certain patients, if they don't have enough pressure to the kidney, it can cause problems. And then also very interestingly is the angioedema, and you can see it here. It's basically swelling of the lips, tongue, throat, something like that. And uh, the incidence of this is extremely low. So in African Americans, 0.2% and all other ethnicities 0.1 percent but it's one of those adverse effects that potentially could be life-threatening if the throat is uh, swollen enough it can compromise airway so it's something that should be counseled on for every ACE or ARB prescription. So the previous adverse effects that I mentioned are for ACEs and ARBs but ACE inhibitors actually have one unique adverse effect only for themselves and that's dry cough. This is interesting because about one in ten patients are Roughly about 10% of patients who start an ACE inhibitor will have a dry, hacking cough. The reason for this is actually very interesting. So we already talked how ACE inhibitors block the angiotensin-converting enzyme, which normally would convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. By blocking it, we do not produce angiotensin 2, which is great if you have high blood pressure. Interestingly, bradykinin is a hormone in the body that also uses ACE uh, and it gets broken down. So if we block the uh, enzyme that breaks it down, we don't get these degradation products, meaning that our bradykinin levels go up, and this increase in bradykinin can actually cause a dry cough that can be troublesome for some patients or very annoying to the point where patients aren't willing to take their ACE inhibitor. We do not see this adverse effect with our angiotensin receptor blockers. So who should not take an ACE or an ARB? Well, if you have an elevated potassium level, uh, potentially it could get even higher and cause things like arrhythmia. So anything greater than somewhere between 5 to 5.5 milliequivalents per liter is too high at baseline and will get worse. A patient who has uh, angioedema to an ACE inhibitor should not take another ACE inhibitor. The data is fairly sparse, but somewhere between 3 to 9% of the time, a patient who has angioedema to an ACE inhibitor will also have angioedema angioedema to an ARB. These are pregnancy category D, so in general we try to avoid ACEs and ARBs in pregnancy. Again, we talked about how ACEs and ARBs can cause acute kidney injury, but if a patient already has acute kidney injury, not a good idea to add these on board. And then finally, there's a condition called bilateral renal artery stenosis. What that means is that the arteries that go to the kidneys are very stenosed, meaning very hardened, and it's difficult for the kidney to regulate blood flow. And if we add an ACE or an ARB, it can compromise the kidney's ability to regulate flow, which can in turn cause acute kidney injury. So anyone with this bilateral renal artery stenosis should not get an ACE or an ARB. So to summarize, we talked about three ACE inhibitors, lisinopril or prenobil zestrel, two different brand names. We talked about a combination product with hydrochlorothiazide called prenzide or zestroatic a very similar ACE inhibitor to lisinopril called enalapril, brand name is Vasotec, and then finally ramapril, it's our alternative ACE inhibitor or Altase. Then there were three angiotensin receptor blockers, Losartan or Cozar, Olmosartan or Benicar, and then finally Valsartan or Diavan.